D. Prosper. Um, I'm an artist, I'm a promoter, I'm a manager, I'm an a and r and I'm a human, a uh, spiritual being having a human experience. In the black community, um, we don't deal with shrinks or psychologists. You know, they usually go to the church and tell you to go find Jesus, or they tell you to, you know, it's, it's, it's because, I don't know if it's an economic thing and, you know, you know more people who are fluent have access to spend money would help. Um, and I think we have dealt with so much turmoil and so much stress and anxiety culturally in this country that, you know, from slavery to the civil rights movement when they're sicking dogs and everything on us and they're telling us to get to the back of the the school bus and you know black over here and Jim Crow and all those things, those had uh, psychological impacts on us, and I feel that uh, we've had to just deal with that because that's just the way of the world. So when you know it's the way of the world, your grandmother would give you love and be like, it's gonna be all right, you know, stay strong. So we kind of have that uh, part of us that just wants to stay strong but without understanding what the strength is. As a black man, being vulnerable is considered being soft. And we in the community want to be strong and, and soft is, is synonymous with weak. And weak is synonymous with, you know, being a sissy or being someone that could, they could chump you. So when you take it out from the ego aspect of our community and being a black man and wearing a badge of honor and you know, going to jail is like this rites of passage and, you know, you got to be like this all the time. And, and I think that that has a lot to deal with a lot of the fathers not being around and a lot of uh, families being broken up from, you know, a lot of societal woes that I can go into, but I won't, I would just, you know, touch the surface of it. But I feel like a lot of it has to do with the, the structure. I mean, we are of understanding of yin and yang and balance. You know, the universe deals with polarities, male, female, up and down, night, dark, you know, you, you name it, it's gonna be an opposite. And I feel uh, to survive in this country, we have been, uh, since, since youths have been promoted with this machismo, and the machismo is, it doesn't identify with the balance of the yin and yang, it, it only deals with you know, the macho aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, I've dealt with anxiety. I think most people, you know, we're, we're locked into how things supposed to be and our little third dimensional viewpoint of ourselves and our ego when something doesn't happen or, or you're anxious and uh, you know, these, these are normal human traits, but how do we deal with them that it doesn't become overwhelming and there's not a chemical imbalance in the brain? That is, you know, stress is man-made, essentially. So if you can just let things go, meditation is always good to just be, be who you are, go, go inside internally and let things go. Um, I'm a Virgo, so like, on the cusp of Leo, so I have a hard time with letting things go. So my anxiety is, is, is a little different because my meter of, uh, of taking things in is a, is a lot different. When, as, when I say I'm a Virgo, meaning that, you know, Virgos forgive, but we never forget. Very true. And within that aspect of knowing myself, I have to have like a glimpse of a window of my personality. And I know how I, how I am because at this point in my life, I am who I am and I know what ticks me and what makes me happy and what doesn't. And I, when something is raising my anxiety levels, I either go into my shell of creativeness, you know, working on music or, or writing or just doing some type of creative expression to help me repair that. If I can't articulate it or if something bothered me, I would trying to write it down journal side, journal wise, and, and allow that to like see it on the paper and then let it go. I think a lot of uh, people don't let things go and they allow things to just fester. And when things fester, then the stress on top of the stress and the top of the stress and before you know it, your balloon's gonna bust. And 
and I think a lot of people, uh, as far as dealing with the stress and the anxiety, it's, it, 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 it differs based on your personality and the things that you had dealt with in your life, in your past, your childhood, all those things. And I, I think a lot of uh, stress and anxiety and things are actually from the food because right. a lot of the foods that we eat, you know, everything from, you know, oils, from vegetable oil, like canola, uh, cotton seed, and soy oil, that's in like 80% of our fast foods and restaurant foods. Right. And those things cause in children autism and ADHD and um, all these different ailments that, that uh, have to do also with, you know, your nervous system. And when things deal with your nervous system, they affect your nervous system. It also affects your mental capacity of taking things in. So when you add those types of things, you understand that it's a bigger issue other than just our anxiety because the foods that we're putting in our body by choice is affecting our moods, it's affecting our stress levels, and it's affecting our health. It's bigger than just food. I feel since the 50s they have, they have figured out ways for depopulation. And when I say depopulation, they want to put chemicals in the water, and they want to put chemicals in the food. And if you do your research and understand about these people, uh, they feel like there's too much people on the planet. So if they can figure out a way for you to kill yourself, you know, through the food, then hey, that, that makes better. You know, you know more, more cancers, more inflation, uh, hypertension, um, diabetes, all these ailments that happen to our community is from a Taco Bell on the corner or the bodega that's selling processed meats and these things. And, and, and a lot of it has to do with the knowledge and having knowledge of self. A lot of our community, uh, especially on the dietary aspect, they follow what tastes well. They don't follow what's good for the spirit or good for the soul. And if you don't think that what you put in your body affects your mood or affects your health, imagine if it's affecting your physical health, then what is it also doing to your mental health? When you look at products like aspartame and food coloring, dyes and all the food, if you look on the back of things, red color this and all that, those have all been linked to, uh, in children, uh, ADHD, whatever that means, anyways, right. um, or some type of way to like keep you down, because when you're down physically and you're down mentally, then you're you, it's, it's, you're dead. You're pretty much you're on your way to death. We, as a people, have dealt with a lot as a community, and being a part of the community. You can either be a hindrance to it or you can be a helpful part of it. And I think what I would say is to, to explore your feminine energy and your masculine energy because the universe is about balance. The world is about balance. I don't know what hard rock dude doesn't like to laugh. I don't know what, you know, you know, there's, there's just, there's just uh, levels to, to, to it. And I, and I think that humor is also another good thing that's helped the black community to be real with you. Uh, a laugh a day keeps the stress away, as they say. And I, I like to laugh, so I would, I would say, you know, laughter is a great medicine. But as far as being vulnerability to me is allowing the ego to subside. Because ego is one of our main problems within our community is like no one wants to be considered soft or looked upon as being soft because soft is synonymous with being taken advantage of or, you know and i think that once we learn who we are and are in love with ourselves then you won't be in fear of being vulnerable because you understand that that is also part of who you are as well.